Good evening, everybody. Hello and welcome to my kitchen for our retro cooking class tonight. So in, in honouring the theme, I borrowed my daughter's disco ball, although it is quite distracting, so we won't let that um, stay on for too long. Hang on. There we go. I was really getting in theme, disco ball, disco music. <laughs> so welcome to my kitchen in East Bentley. I know a few of you have been here before. Uh, we were chatting with the team the other day about doing um, a cooking class. And of course, we've last week released our new retro collection. And a few of us are, you know, of the age where we went, oh, we all remember these dishes so well. So Mandy and I thought we'd jump on tonight. There's a couple of other team members on tonight who would normally present but haven't been well or whatever. So we just thought we'd just jump on and do a couple of our favourites. And the thing I love about cooking for you tonight is that it means I'm also cooking for my family tomorrow night. So when I got home tomorrow night, dinner's ready. So how cool is that? So we are here tonight to show you the amazing TM6 and... For those of you, I saw quite a few of you are registered have actually already got the amazing TM6 on your bench. So congratulations for making that investment. But for those who don't have a TM6 yet, I'd love to show you some of the features of it tonight. And uh, so will Mandy. We're doing a couple of different dishes. So I'll let her introduce her dishes. But the ones that I have chosen are a tuna mornay and a butterscotch custard. How good does that sound? I've never made that before. But as you know, cooking with the thermos, you don't have to have a test run. You just roll with it in front of a crowd and know it's going to work. So that's what I'm doing here tonight for you, for you people. So what I'd just like to share with you quickly is that the Thermomix, the price, for those who don't have one yet, the investment is 2579 We do have a few different payment options available, the most popular of which is to come and earn your Thermomix. So you can either earn it completely or earn it half price by making either three or six sales in your 60-day program. The other thing to have a think about tonight, if you're watching this and going, oh, but I, I'm really thinking about investing in thermics but i'd really love to see how it works then please invite us into your home to do a demo because we are really enjoying being back in homes after two years of only being on zoom and as much as no one enjoyed what happened in covid what it did introduce us to was this hybrid world so we can offer both both sides of that coin for you guys as well, which is really exciting. Um, we also have a three payment option for uh, the Thermomix or of course a one-off payment option as well. So if you host, it also opens you up to host rewards. So there's lots of exciting things happening at the moment. And for those who haven't invested in the Thermomix yet, the TM6 up um, for the next three weeks until the 5th of September, is uh, also coming with a gift with purchase of a free glider board, which I have here tonight, and a $150 mix shop voucher. Now, just on that, sorry, $140 mix shop voucher. Now, on that, if you do decide that you'd like to join the team, the business kit is $150. So you can actually put your $140 towards that voucher and buy a business kit for only $10. Alternatively, host a demo, get a 20% discount voucher and put that towards maybe a second bowl or some other accessories in our mix shop. So lots of options for you so speak to your consultant because I don't want to overwhelm you and, and they will go through all that with you. Alrighty I'm going to stop talking and introduce you to my business partner and my disco ball which I actually am going to turn off now because it is a little distracting. So for those of you who are not familiar with the TM6 this is I am showing off here by the way twinning my TM6 is a twinning so I should have put the black out and I actually lent it to a friend. So um, if you do want to see the sparkling black Thermomix, we would love to bring it to your house for a demo. Um, but we are also doing a class next week, so we could show it to you then. All righty. So the cool thing about the TM6, if you're familiar with Thermomix language, the time, temperature and speed language is still the same. Now, the cool thing about it is that it's an interactive screen. So if you're swiping to the left, you access all of these modes on the right-hand side there. And then if we swipe in the other direction, it gives you full access to our Cookie Do platform. So Cookie Do, for those of you who might not be familiar with Cookie Do, pop in the chat if you're not familiar with Cookie Do. Um, what it is, is basically our Netflix for recipes. So Imagine turning your machine on and having a look in your fridge and just typing in any ingredient you've got sitting in your fridge and then getting up a whole lot of recipes that you can use to, to uh, that ingredient in. So what that means is no waste. So they say actually that the average household throws out a grocery bag every week. So we were talking about this recently going, how much do you think a grocery bag is? 
And we all agreed, we used to say 50, now we think it's probably closer to 70. So the funny thing about that maths is that if you throw out a $70 bag of groceries each week, at the end of the year, you've not only bought a Thermomix, but you've also saved some money as well. So that's a, that's a fun little maths puzzle we did. But anyway, I am going to get on with cooking the tuna mornay, which I'm very excited about. And then while part of that's cooking, we'll shoot to Mandy's kitchen. So we've got lots of things happening to keep you entertained. So what I've done here, if I go back to home, now you can do different things with your Thermomix as far as saving the recipe. I saved it in my weekly planner. So with Cookie Do, you can save things in a weekly planner and you can add them to your shopping list as well. So here's my two dishes here. So when you're ready to cook the dish, you go straight into it. And when you scroll down, it gives you all this really great information. So the level of difficulty, the prep time, the total time, and the portion size. Now, we also have scaled recipes now. So some of those recipes, you can click on that portion size and change to what suits you and your family. Then the left-hand side, all the ingredients. So as a result of that, I've got all my things prepped a bit earlier. And then the methods on the right there. So you just follow the bouncing ball. So one of the things we love about the Thermomix is that you don't need to know how to cook. You just need to know how to read. So it means anyone in the house can cook. So the first instruction, preheat the oven to 180. I actually did that just before we jumped on tonight. So we'll go straight back in here. And then the next one is about greasing a casserole dish. Again, I've got that already sorted. So it guides you every step of the way. So you're not at the point where you've got to pop it in the dish and it's not greased yet. So you know what you're doing. Now, this part here is very cool. So what we're doing here, oh, do you know what's funny? <laughs> so what it wants us to do here is... Pop a thermal serving bowl on the lid because we are actually going to cook the pasta for our Mornay in the thermo server. So how cool is that? So again, I love that because if kids are cooking, you don't want them lighting a stove and cooking pasta on the stove. They can just put water in here and cook it that way. So place it on and then it says to put the pasta in. So I've got that there. That's all pre weighed um, now, I actually, a little tip, I have actually put some water in my thermo server to pre-warm it as well. So, um, and what this does is it cooks the pasta while you're making the sauce, all righty? So, what I'm going to do is also give you a little tip because this recipe just says to put boiling water on the pasta. I've actually got a good tablespoon of salt here as well because I don't know if anyone's tasted pasta not cooked in salty water but it's not that nice um, and I actually am also using gluten-free pasta tonight as well so that's also an option so let's get on with this part of the recipe and the first step for this part of the recipe is to grate the cheese I don't need to take the bowl out do I just the basket I had the cheese in the fridge so because if you don't grating cheese and it's too soft it kind of goes a bit um mushy but I just want to show you that I've got it chopped here in quite big pieces I've got my cheese and parsley in there together so in that guys so I've sort of got it chopped in quite big cubes the rule of thumb is that it'll fit through the hole in the thermos in the lid of the um jug uh, and or, or about the same size as your dial there so in that goes parsley went in there as well as you saw and there we go so it's three seconds, speed nine, super easy. Beautiful. Now it says transfer 100 grams of the mixture, which is about half. So, because it was a 200 gram mixture. Now this is where I wish you were here because the smell of that parsley grated in with the cheese there smells absolutely amazing. All right, I've probably done a little bit more than half, but that's okay. So just have a look at how that's beautifully grated that there. And next is to add in my breadcrumbs. So I've got my breadcrumbs here, pre-weighed, ready to go. And popping the lid back on just for a few seconds. And now it's just five seconds on speed four. Now, that's actually doing that in reverse because, you know, we don't want to grate the cheese anymore, but we want the breadcrumbs to go through the cheese mixture because that, what that's doing is making our crunchy, um, crunchy topping. So that's transferred to a bowl and set aside. So got another bowl here. And the next instruction is one of our favourite instructions. Who knows what it is? Pop it in the chat. 
Who knows what our, the, everyone's favourite instruction is when you're doing lots of steps? <laughs> Shout it out if you like. Do not clean the mixing bowl. Yes, that's the one. <laughs> All righty, so now we're getting on with our Mornay sauce. So we've got one brown onion cut into half and two garlic cloves. In they go, two garlic cloves. And then I've got 40 grams here of unsalted butter. That bit does not want to come off. Oh, there we go. In it goes. All righty. Uh, so it's going to chop that for five seconds on speed seven all together. Just want to show you these little cups that I'm using. Do you know what these are? Do you want to know what these are? So guilty secret, I do buy little rice cups because my kids will come home from school and heat up a rice cup and put a can of tuna with it. And I'm pretty happy with that as an afternoon snack. So I keep the little cups. They're really cool for little sorbets, for, you know, all sorts of little things. So that's my way of going. I am buying them, but I actually have got about 10 of these saved up now. It's quite handy. All righty. So now I'm just going to show you this because now it's going to cook. And I wish you, again, I wish you could smell it. So what we've got here is really a garlicky, oniony butter, which is going to be the base of um, the tuna mornay, which is like a bechamel, right? But that's just going to add some beautiful flavour into that. All righty. So I'm going to pop that on here. And, oh, hang on. Next step, a bit of flour. Oh, no, sorry, wrong. So I'm going to cook that for three minutes. Nearly missed my step. And then I'm going to add flour and milk and cook it for another six minutes. And I'll be back for the, the good bit when the tuna and all the corn and everything goes in. All righty. Thanks for listening to me. I'm going to pop you over to the lovely Mandy. Hi, Mandy. Hello. How are you? <laughs> good. All right. So um, so what I'm making is um, mini chicken kievs. And the chicken kievs, you can make them any size you like, but this recipe is specifically says mini ones. And they're just, you know, like... um. I remember, I mean, I'm not exactly young, but I do remember my parents, you know, serving up things and that were sort of like nibbly things that you'd have, like cheese and wine and, you know, all that sort of stuff. So it, it is definitely um, retro. Um, and the ones that I'm making a little bit different in that I am making them gluten-free. Um, there's another recipe for chicken Kievs, LCHF chicken Kievs on Cookie Doo, and they are gluten-free as well. Um, they're a skinny mixer recipe and I've been having a few little internet issues so what I've done to save my recipe to make sure I could get my recipe is you know how Michelle put hers in her week I've made a collection just with these two recipes so if, if you ever you know sometimes we let you know that cookie do is going to be down for servicing or something like that if ever that happens don't put anything in your week create a collection and you'll be able to cook those recipes okay so I'm just going to go to the three lines up there. Uh, my recipes, creative collections. Here we go. A retro. <laughs> and I'm starting with the mini thick and key eggs. All right. Oh, I just I don't know if you can see that. That's how I actually store my bowl and my um uh, and my MC so that actually actually all gets aired. I just have my um spatula in the top there like that. Okay. Clever, Mandy. Yeah, well, there you go. As you said, we always learn from each other. Okay. Now, this is where it says 100, bread crumb, uh, bread, 100 grams of bread cut into pieces. But what I'm putting in is um, 100 grams of, um, of almonds. Okay, and I have got the other bits and pieces in here too. I've got dried oregano, I've got sweet paprika, I've got black pepper, I've got sea salt, and all that's going in there. And that's going to just um, chop for, I shouldn't tell you what it's doing, I was going to ask you if you know what, if you can put in what, what actual modes or what sort of um, functions we're using uh, as we go along. So I'm going to do this for 10 seconds on speed seven. All 
All right, so I've got um, all that there. It says transfer to a large plate and set aside. So, of course, I've got a bowl out, but I'm just going to push all that down. Obviously, you can use breadcrumbs if you want to. You can use gluten-free breadcrumbs if you prefer, but I just find that um, almonds are a really good option. So um, I will get a plate. So just hold on. In the chat, if you know how to get the blades really clean, I'm not going to worry about it too much with this, but um, yeah, okay. Anyone know how you get your blades really clean? If you've got, um, you know, if you had a dip or something like that and you wanted to really get them nice and clean, or you get your bowl really dry, perfect. Thanks, Kelly. <laughs> uh, all right, now. 125 grams of salted butter, chilled and cut into cubes. Again, as Michelle said, you've got to love it when um, you don't have to wash the bowl. And then in this little jar, I've got my garlic down the bottom there. I've got some parsley and I've got some chives and I've got the pepper. All that's going in there. Forty seconds on speed five. So just mixing all that up, and that's going to be our centerpiece for the little kiosk. Has anyone made chicken kievs before? Pop in the box, in the chat box if you have. So there's something that I always thought, oh, that looks way too hard because I sort of, you know, in my head, I never read the recipe. I always thought you've got to fold the chicken breast around the, you know, it's really stupid because you don't have to do that at all around the butter. You, um, you'll see how it all happens. Anyway, there's our butter. And it wants me to divide it between two pieces of baking paper and shape into two long cigars. So I'm going to put some into here. All right, and um, it's going to get messy. I don't think there's any other solution. It's amazing because it's really good that it does say that you need to have the butter cold because it's got really soft. So I'm just going to roll this up. And I'm going to twirl up the end and that's going to go in the freezer in a minute. And I will do the other one. Oh. Have you all found your timer on your, um, on your TM6? It's the best thing. I just love it. I'll show you in a minute. When I actually put these in to um, cook, I'll show you. If you haven't found it before. All right. Uh, and of course, if you didn't want to do, you know, if you, not garlic's not your thing, you could do anything in here. You could put harissa in here, you, you know, with your butter. You could do any other flavors you, you wanted. Oops, this is in a very long cigar, this one. All right, I'm going to just roll it up a little bit. Okay, I'm just going to chuck those in the freezer. All right. And again, no point in... Um, been washing the um washing the bowl. 
got my pre uh, preheated my um, oven. I have ready here. I've got four tablespoons of flour that are ready here. And now I'm putting Parmesan cheese in. A little bit more than they said. I don't think that matters though. It's never too much Parmesan cheese. Uh, 10 seconds on speed seven. Okay, and I've got some chicken breast here that I have cut up. Now, most of the time, yeah, I'll, I will show you how the timer works in a minute. Um, so that's our, our um, cheese. So the chicken breast, it was frozen. Um, it has defrosted, but it's just uh, the, the way that I would normally um, mince meat is that I would have it partially frozen, maybe half an hour in there, chopped up. And then I would go seven seconds speed seven. Um, it's not quite what it does here, but it's, it's very similar. You get the similar results. So this is still quite cold, this chicken, but we are about to cook it. So it's probably a good thing that it's not frozen. I wish Jenny was watching. She, she'd have a fit of having to touch the, the, um, the, the meat. Okay. I think that's one of the things I love about the team, though. We're all so different, but we all share this one passion and knowledge. Yeah. All right, one egg. Um, salt and pepper. I thought I'd salt and peppered everything, but obviously didn't do this bit. Salt. Pepper. Two tablespoons of the reserve coating, this stuff. Forty seconds on speed nine. Maybe while Mandy's doing 40 seconds on speed nine. I'll just steal the camera for a minute because you might have heard my um, mind going off a minute ago saying it's ready for the next step. So what happened off camera was that I added in the milk um, and the flour. So now I've got like a like a bechamel almost, right? But I've got the onion and um, things in there as well. So next is the tuna, which I have here, so it was a 425 gram of tuna. My kids have been walking past and picking at that because that was more tuna before. But anyway, whatever's here is going in. So that's that. And then is the corn kernels, which I also have draining here. Just tip it back so you can see me tipping things into the machine. Beautiful. Sorry, Mandy, I stole the limelight for a minute. No problem. <laughs> and next is the creamed corn. So now I bought this today, but did you know that you can actually make creamed corn in your thermomix? So if you've got corn kernels or even frozen corn in the freezer, you can actually search creamed corn and make that in your thermomix as well. So just a little tip. Now there's a few little spices in this. So I've got here paprika, salt and pepper. So I'm going to put all of those in. But I will share with you that I did make this recently and someone actually said to me um, who'd made it before, it needs a bit more seasoning. Oh, so the next is a tab of lemon juice. Now, I just buy lazy lemon for things like this. So that's just a really handy thing to have in the fridge, I find. Um, now, there are no other ingredients, but when someone said to me it needed a bit more flavour, what do you reckon I reached for? Now, I just made this yesterday. I've got a demo tomorrow for a lady whose um, husband uh, follows the fold that diet. So no onion, no garlic. So I made this specifically for that demo. But I just reckon you can't ever go wrong with a nice big tablespoon of our, our um, stock paste in anything. Our liquid gold, as it were. So now that's just going to all mix together on reverse for five seconds. Meanwhile, here's my pasta. 
cooking in the thermo server. Now I added salt, as I said before, and I also added a dash of olive oil because again, when we made this in the office the other week, I, I thought that the pasta sort of stuck together a bit. So you can see that my pasta here is very happy pasta. So they will be my hot tips for that. Alrighty. So now I'm just going to show you this mixture. That falls quite heavy. And it's probably not pretty if I'm honest, but it will be. So that's my beautiful mixture. So it's like a bechamel full of tuna and corn, basically. So I am going to mix that all together and let you go back to Mandy because she's going to get things in the oven as well. But I'm basically going to mix it all together, pop it in this lasagna dish, put my silicon uh, lid on the top. Actually, I can't, I don't know if it says cover it or not, but I just wanted to show off my silicon lid and throw it in the oven for about 25 minutes. All right, so I will see you soon after Mandy's made her Kievs <laughs> for my butterscotch custard. <laughs> All right, Mandy, where are you, my friend? Back to you. Stole the camera. Here we go. Cool. Okay, so basically my, um, the, uh, everything's mixed up and I've started dividing it up. But what I just wanted to do was I mentioned before about cleaning your blades. You can see I've still got some uh, mince mixture around the blades. When you are in the middle of a recipe, you can save your recipe by just hitting the little house. Um, and then I'm going to turbo. So I'm going to swipe over here, hit my turbo. And remembering that when you're in turbo, the only way that your lid will unlock is by getting out of turbo. So the easiest thing to do is hit back onto my little bookmark recipe there. And there, can you see how clean those blades are now? So I've got a little bit more mixture to scrape out. So, and when you're scraping, always push down to the bottom of your bowl and then scrape in a clockwise direction because then you're hitting the rounded side of your blades, not the sharp side. Um, I've got nowhere to put, I've got so many things happening here. I've got nowhere to put anything. All right. Okay, all right, done with that. So um, I'm just making these little, um, I've just been dividing this up and I don't know if you've got one, one of these little numbers here. You can get these from the mix shop. They're usually used for bread. Um, and I'm just using a silicon mat here, so I don't want anything sharp. And this is really good because it's just helping me divide things up and then I've got to make them into little balls. So I've got um, a whole lot of mixture there. It's meant to make 20. So I did um, 10 and 10, and I've got five here and five, make five out of this one as well. So one... Uh, doing yeah, obviously a bit of a guesstimate. If you want it to be really, you know, spot on, obviously you can get your scales up and you can weigh them, but um, I'm not that sort of person. So <laughs> I'm just going to wet my hands because I think things are going to be really um, a bit sticky. And I'm not going to make all of them now because that would be seriously boring for you to watch me make 20 little mini chicken kiefs but I'll just do um, two or three. So the next thing I have to do is roll, roll the ones that I've made in the flour. So I've got the flour here. I'm just gonna make it a lot less sticky to handle. One. Two. Actually, I should do four because this my husband and I will probably each want to. I'm thinking so I will do one more. And then the rest of them, what's really good with this recipe is you can freeze it. So I'm, I will make up the rest of them, um, you know, off camera and I will freeze them. You can freeze them uncooked. So I'm just going to put that down there. Um, I'm going to just have to do a little bit of cleanup here and put my four... Um, Flowered ones, just they're just sitting down there. I'm just going to get this out of the way.
All right. So then what it says, dry my hands. It says to use the end of a wooden spoon, but my wooden spoon handles are not like this. And I think that's a much better uh, thing to use. Um, let's get back here. So remove the butter from the freezer, cut into 20 pieces. It's actually got really firm in there very quickly. And I need a knife. And I'm just going to cut so that I didn't, um, I, I'd probably make a bit more butter, you know. But I'll cut up a couple of little things here. Should don't have to be too big, really. So I can probably put that one in half. And then, using the end of a wooden spoon or spatula, make a small indent into each meatball. So I'm going to do that. And put the butter in. So they don't have to be very big at all, actually. That's going to be seriously buttery and garlicky. And then you just fold that around there. Um, now, if you do the LCHF ones, what I find is, again, you can do different sizes, uh, but if you, you put your mixture in your hand, your chicken mixture, and then put your um, your butter in there and then fold around and it works really well. Um, that was the one I just did. I don't want to just gonna end up with, um, with one with a whole heap of butter in it. So, all right. Again, closing that up. Um, I think they need quite so much butter. And apparently when you do make these and you're ready to eat them, they can spurt, butter can spurt out. So just be really careful if you are. Um, and particularly if you're doing it as a, you know, finger food thing, they're quite big. Um, okay, one more. All right. Okay, I've got those there. And next, seal covering all the butter with a chicken mixture. And then we're going to dip each ball right into the, the beaten egg and then into the coating that I made before. Okay, so I've just got um, a bit of egg here. And then we're going to cover it in the coating. There we go. We have a little tray here. This is one of the mix shop trays with um, one of the silicon liners in it. I love those. One of my favourite things, the mix shop trays with those liners. So you're not, you know, it's all reusable. Okay. Now, I'm just going to literally finish off this last one here, and then I will show you the timer because I will put them in the oven. Tell you what, I think I picked the messiest thing. All right. You know what's great, Mandy? It, one of those, that's one of those things that when you're reading the instructions, you can feel a bit like, I'm not really sure what I'm doing. So actually seeing you do it, I'm sure has <laughs> been all right. So I've got those there, and they're going to go into the oven for 20 minutes. And how I'm going to time it is on the, I'll just go back to the home screen here. So on your home screen, or actually it was in the recipe as well, you've got a little thing that just sticks down in the middle. It's probably a little bit hard to see. A little bit closer. Here. If I hit that then it gives me an option to put a timer on. And I've got 20 minutes. Oops, too many. 20, and then you hit start. And then you click out of it and you can keep going. So if I had something else to do in this recipe, I could just keep going and it will just let me know when 20 minutes is up. So I love that. I've never used timers, but I used to get it on my, do it on my phone but this is fantastic. And if you want your thermic screen to stay on, you can also just put the timer on and it won't turn off. 
Over to you, Miss Dow. Go put mine in the oven. Thank you, Mandy. I just did the same. All right, so tuna monet in the oven, which means I'm going to get on with the custard. Now, one of the things that I love about the thermix, and I learned this when I went to a cooking class many years ago, is that there's a lot of recipes that will have multiple components. And sometimes you might look at that whole thing and go, oh, I'm not looking for all of that. And it can become complicated, but maybe just look at it and look at the bit that you want and just take that bit out. So this next recipe is I'm making butterscotch custard. But the recipe is actually a butterscotch whip, I think it's called, where you just then put the custard in the fridge with gelatin and leave it for two hours and then you do something else and whip some cream up and fold it all together and make almost like a mousse out of it. So I'm not doing that part. I'm just doing butterscotch custard because how good does that sound? And who doesn't love custard? And these things are all about showing you functions of the thermomix as well. So this is just going to show you how you can create a beautiful, smooth texture uh, with anything like that. So whether that be hollandaise, whether that be custard, whether that be bechamel, any of those sorts of things. So actually now that I've finished that machine, I might as well just do that and swap my jugs over. Hey, then I don't have to reach. That makes sense. Up there for thinking. There we go. Swap my little sides around. Bingo. And I've got my little tray here with all my ingredients on it. Oh, I've got a couple of the fresh ingredients in the fridge actually, so I have to grab those. So um, here we go. So yeah, oh, sorry, it's called Butterscotch Delight. There you go. It will be a delight, I assure you. I used to love, um, custard is one of our demo dishes and it was when I first started as a consultant 10 years ago. And then it came off the demo dishes for a while and it's actually now been added back on. And I do remember doing demos where kids would say to their mum, mum, are you going to buy the custard machine? So it is a custard machine, but it is also so much more. It's the cocktail machine. It's the dinner machine. It's the bread machine. It's all of it. So it wears whichever hat you want it to wear. So again, we're just going to go start cooking with that. Now I'm just going to grab my butter and cream from the fridge. So once Michelle's grabbing the butter and cream, um, it reminded me, I was looking at that, that recipe, I don't know if anybody else is from the UK, but it reminded me of a packet mix that my mum used to get called Angel Delight. And you would have a powder that you would mix up with um, with milk and you would make something that ended up like this. But obviously it was a lot, it, it was probably wasn't anywhere near as good for us. No, I can imagine. I think that's one of the things I remember when I first started, they talked about, so in goes the butter talked about um, the fact that a lot of um, pre-bought custards have additives and preservatives that are actually kind of uppers. So kids are having it as dessert and then struggling to go to sleep. Whereas when you make it yourself, it's, you know, milk, sugar, egg, a bit of corn flour and maybe some flat, you know, some vanilla or something. So it's just all whole ingredients. So what this is doing first is the, the butter's gone in and it's actually melting the butter. The other ingredients that I've got here, which is cream, corn flour, soft brown sugar. I'll tell you a little um, guilty secret. <laughs> we, we were in Cairns with my mother-in-law a few years ago and we had porridge for breakfast. And then she was like, oh, you know why I have my porridge? And she goes and gets the cream and brown sugar and puts that on the porridge. So porridge breakfast kind of became dessert. So that's to this day still how my kids like to eat it. And it tastes incredible, but I don't highly recommend it from a health perspective. But gee, it tastes good. Um, and then I had to pre-weigh some milk and I thought I'd weigh it in our little thermal jug. So this is available on mix shops, got my milk in there, but really great on the table for custards or gravy or any sort of sauces that you want to keep hot or cold uh, and I've got two this size so if I've got sort of 10 people at the table I can and it's say gravy for example I can have one at each end so yeah they, and there's actually a, a bigger size now as well so there must have been feedback so it's one of our really popular items so I, I do love it it's very cool. Has anyone got any favourite mixed shop items that they want to tell us about? Mandy and I were talking about mixed shop items before because we're both having a little um We've both been having a little splurge because um, each month there are different consultant incentives. And a couple of months ago, 
the incentive was that we could earn vouchers and we both earned $650 voucher. How cool is that? So we're discussing all our favourite items so we can spend our money. Who doesn't love spending money? All righty. Especially at a time when you probably shouldn't be. Right. So in goes the sugar. The cream. I love this little um, spatula here. I've had it for years, but just love the curvy silicon nature of it. Uh, vanilla extract. This is the um, Costco one, but can I say, if you've got access to vanilla beans, you can make your own and it's super impressive and super easy. In fact, I think one of my friends is on here tonight, gorgeous Fiona, and she taught me that. And it's such a wow thing to be able to make your own <laughs> vanilla bean paste, especially with how much it costs. All right, I better put a lid on that because it's about to go at speed four for five minutes. And we don't want to put a mess all over the place. Where's my other MC? I've got more than one. Here we go. Three jugs all over the place. There we go. All right, speed four for five minutes. So while that's doing that, we might head back to Mandy and she's going to show you her delicious prawn cocktail sauce, Mandy. Yes. Okay, where are you? Give me a bit of time. I forgot to wash my spatula. <laughs> um, all right. So, yeah, prawn cocktail. To me, that was, you know, you going out. Like, we used to have camping holidays in the UK and once a week when we were camping, we'd go and have a pub meal. And a prawn cocktail was a pub meal thing. Um, and I always used to have steak and kidney pie. <laughs> uh, but um, I'm not going to do the whole prawn cocktail tonight because what it actually suggests is that you, you steam your prawns in the Varoma uh, and then you make the sauce. But you really want the sauce to sit in the fridge just to cool down and to thicken up before you actually use it. So it actually suggests that you make the sauce 24 hours before. And then um, obviously, you know, you can shred lettuce and you can um, add your prawns and all that sort of stuff a bit later on. But before we move on to that, um, I had, do have, it looks really grotty in this jar, um, but this is um, is thermally made. I'm sure I don't want to tip it all over my um, all over my screen and um, keyboard, but that that, that is Thermomix um, vanilla bean paste, all right? So it, it is, a, what, yeah, it smells incredible. All right, so here we go. I've got the retro prawn cocktail. And if you actually go into Cookie Do and put retro in and go to collections, they're actually, in, and you've got the US and the UK and um, Australia in there, actually three retro collections. And all of them have a prawn cocktail. All right, so start cooking. Uh, actually, I'll go back into here. So the way you can find where you want to be, as I said, I'm not gonna steam prawns tonight. So I'm gonna go down through the recipe here. Um, it's got the prawns and lettuce at the top, and then it's got what's called the Murray Rose sauce. So I'm clicking on to the Murray Rose sauce. It's asking me to put a jug on top of the lid and then fill it um, 300 grams of grapeseed oil. Now, whether you're making um, this or you're making mayo or anything like that and it asks you to do that, what's the point of actually dirtying a jug when you apply it straight into the container that you're going to store the end product in? All right, so that's what I've done. I've weighed that in there. Then it says, prep two eggs into a small bowl. Put those here. And set aside. Thirty seconds, feed three. I'm going to put the eggs through the hole, the top. It's just really mixing the egg up. Four seconds. 
and then click next. Insert the measuring cup into the mixing bowl. Just showing it. So it's literally just mixed up the egg. Okay. Now what we're going to do, it's, it's if you're, we're not cooking these eggs, all right, but um, the, but what we're going to do is emulsify this sauce by slowly pouring, like we do with a mayo, uh, slowly pouring the oil in. So and it's got one of those little videos, but basically you're going to see what we're going to do anyway. So it's going to, it's going for three minutes, um, 37 degrees. So the eggs will actually cook a little bit. And I've got to turn to speed six. So I'll do that. And then it's going to ask me to drizzle the mayo into the top. So it's going to drizzle in around here and slowly go into, um, trip down into the bowl. And that's what helps you emulsify. Okay. So it's a bit of a boring three minutes, sorry guys. Well, that's all right. I might, in 12 seconds, Mandy, I might cut over to me for a second then. Excellent. Good timing. Yeah, so if you haven't made the cooked mayo, it is the best. And I think all of us have, all us consultants have things that we make and we don't make. And before we had the cooked mayo, I would go and buy mayo. But now with the cooked mayo, it's the easiest thing to make and it's really delicious. Very, very true. It is amazing. Um, and I love that tip about using the jar that you're going to have it in at the end. So this is cooked the base. This is basically made of butterscotch sauce or a toffee sauce. So I don't want to tip it. I laugh in, in lockdown we and when we're doing demos, the amount of times we poured things on our laptops. But I wish you could smell it because the brown sugar, the richness of the the brown sugar mixed in with the vanilla, like it just smells incredible. So 400 grams of milk, which I pre-weighed here in my beautiful jug. And it's it's been sitting on the bench for about two hours because I prepped before I had to go and do the, you know, the dance pickup and all of that. And it's still really cold. So yeah, these are great. Okay, 40 grams of corn flour. In it goes. A little tip when you're putting sort of flowers and things in, if the top of your blade is exposed, put it around the edge on the into the liquid rather than, because otherwise you'll get that bit of the blade where the, that bit doesn't sort of go in. And then last but not least, um, oh, <laughs> two egg yolks. Guess what I did? I put the yolks in the fridge and I've left the whites here. Hold that thought. <laughs> Wouldn't it have been funny if I threw them out? Not because I don't like waste, which is why I didn't throw them out. But anyway, here we go. Beautiful. In that goes. Oh, pinch of salt. Pinch of salt. Here we go. Pinch salt of caramel. Oh my God, this is going to be amazing. All right, there she goes. So that is now going to cook for about nine minutes but I might stop it a bit early so we don't run too far over so I can show you all what it looks like are you good Mandy shall we come back to you now uh yeah sorry I was just trying to um, find the vanilla bean paste recipe because there's a question there I'm wondering if I got it from the recipe community um, so, uh, yeah I'm just saying I couldn't um, someone was asking there about um the vanilla bean paste recipe I thought it was cookie dough, but maybe it's the recipe community. So if you haven't found the Thermomix recipe community, just go on to Google and Google it um, and, and um, just put vanilla bean paste um, Thermomix recipe community and see what comes up there. Right. Yeah. So yeah. when you all do the, um, I, was it Tick of Yum? I think it was that one. That oh, was it? To, if you yeah. as Nancy just said, if you type in vanilla bean paste Thermomix, uh, you'll find there are a few different recipes there. So, yeah. Um, oh, so, one coming up on cookie dough. You've got one? On cookie dough, yeah. Oh, good. Okay. If you can post, that'd be great. Um, so, it. this is my the basis of my sauce. It almost looks a bit like your custard. Uh, and, and then I'm going to add in um, a whole lot of things which I've put together. It's really simple. Two tablespoons of tomato sauce. Now, if you don't make your tomato sauce, Find the tomato ketchup recipe. It is fantastic. It has a little bit of chili in it. 
And the great thing is you're not bringing a plastic bottle into your, um, or a squeezy thing into your house. You are using up a jar that you already have. And it is sensational. I made a massive batch of that um, earlier in the year. Um, then I've got Worcestershire sauce, a couple of pinches of paprika. I actually chose the um, smoky paprika, the paprika, <laughs> um, some Tabasco, pepper, and salt. So I'm going to put all of those in. By the way, chicken kiefs are smelling pretty damn good. 10 seconds on speed three. I do love a chicken kiev. It doesn't oh, yeah. have buttery goodness. And it's so retro, isn't it? Certainly is. And that's it. So the sauce is done. Um, and it is beautiful pink colour. Um, and I'll put it back into that jar and it's going to go into the fridge until um, tomorrow and then I'll get some prawns and we will be eating a nice little retro um, prawn cocktail. I'll um, not sure what's happened to Michelle there. Hello. We, we can come back to you and I'm going to have check out my um, my Kievs in a sec. Beautiful. Here I am. Hello, everybody. How's everybody going? Is everyone tired because you stayed up and watched the soccer last night? <laughs> so now I can see some smiles and nodding. People are awake. Yay. Um, so I've got um, a couple of minutes left on my custard, and I thought I would just put a show of hands if you'd like me to show you cookie do. Anyone like a quick? Oh, yeah. Oh, there was a few there. Yay. All righty. That's exciting. So what I'm going to do is quickly share my screen and take you over to Cookie Do. Hang on a minute. We need to see the whole screen, not just my messy screen. Hang on. The toolbar's in the way. Hang on. Here we go. All righty. Now, can you see that, guys? I'm going to assume yes because no one's yelled yeah, out. Good. It's good. Yeah, it's good? Yeah. Beautiful. Awesome. Okay, so I'm just going to go back to the home screen. Now, what you'll notice initially is that when I showed you my cookie do screen at the start on my Thermomix, this is what it looks like. So the awesome thing about cookie do is that you don't have to learn different formats for different devices. So if you scroll down here, this is exactly what I would have seen on um, my Thermomix screen. So I mentioned before about using up ingredients in your fridge. So for example, if you typed in chicken, you would then get all these different options to do with your chicken. So you can see we've got chicken curries, chicken soups, chicken lasagna, chicken uh, burgers. So all different options here. So when you go through, you can actually have a look and go, oh, which is the one that I, I like the look of or the sound of? And, you know, turmeric chicken. Oh, there's all sorts of fun things here. Chicken with bell peppers and beer sauce. That sounds interesting. I love it when I do this because I always discover something I haven't seen before. Um, this is um, one that's very popular, the creamy lemon butter chicken. So when you're going through here, you can go, oh, yeah, I do like the sound of that one. And I can click on that and have a bit of a look to see if I've got the rest of those ingredients and if I like the sound of it. And I can go, oh, yeah, that's all very pretty simple ingredients. So I can go cook today or I could add it to my weekly planner. So I could go, yeah, actually, I'm going to make that next Monday night. Save that in there. And if I'm going to make it, I'd also like to add it to my shopping list. So you've got a few different options there. Now, if I go back, I might decide that I've got something and I might go more into my filter. So I go, you know what, I've got some pumpkin. What am I going to do with that? So... Pop in my pumpkin. Now, again, you've got pumpkin pie, pumpkin poke bowls, pumpkin ooh, pumpkin pesto. Oh, if you haven't made this spaghetti with roast pumpkin, it's really good. Um, pumpkin soup. So there's all sorts of different options here. But you can see there's savoury, there's dessert, there's all sorts of things. So if I want to be more specific, I can actually go, you know what, I've got pumpkin and I'd like to make a main meal that's vegetarian. 
So I can select that. So it's not showing me donuts when I actually want to make dinner. Because, you know, I can be easily distracted. And I might end up eating donuts for dinner. So then you've just got your savoury dishes that are main meals that you can do with your pumpkin. So you've got lots of different options there. And then again, from here, you don't have to go into the recipe to add it to your week. Using these three little dots here, I can select those. And from here, I can add it to my shopping list and I can also add it to my week. But yeah, that's a great dish. All righty. So that's a, a sort of a bit of interest. And you'll notice here, I've got all of these countries listed. So in the filters, and I'll go into that again, if you scroll down, you've got lots of different options. So here I might go, you know, I've got pumpkin, but I've actually also got some capsicum. I could type something in there. That also, this here, it says excluded ingredients. So if you were dairy-free or gluten-free, for example, or no onion or no egg or any of those sorts of things, you can type them in there. Um, the tags are things like budget-friendly, for example. You can select your level of difficulty that you're looking to, um, to do. So in midweek, you might go, do you know what, just show me easy things. I'm not interested in doing an advanced meal for my three kids who I just need to get dinner on the table. Uh, you can also filter through the, the times, the portion sizes, the ratings. And then what you'll notice here is I've got English selected as my language, but then I've selected all of these different countries who also have recipes in English. So I've got lots of different options there with using my filters. So when you're then looking at your week, you can go into your week here and look at your weekly planner. So you, what you'll see, and you'll notice this on your machine as well, it'll go into cook today. So what's happening from today forward. However, you do have the option to select this little calendar icon here. And this is on your Thermomix screen as well, the TM6 screen. And what that will do is show it to you more in this sort of format. So the benefit of that is that if I had planned to cook this yesterday, for example, these ricotta dumplings, and I didn't do that, I can go into that and go move that to another day because I didn't end up making that last night. We ate leftovers instead. And I'm going to make that on Sunday and then save it in there. So you can move that around as well. Now, from here, you can see that I've got my shopping list on the side here. So I can go show ingredients. And then this is where the magic really happens. Now, for those who aren't familiar with them, I mean, with Cookie Do rather, hope you're sitting down because I'm going to tell you something super exciting here. From the comfort of your home, not only can you plan your meal, you can do your online shopping. So by selecting click uh, order ingredients, you can go straight to Woolworths and it will take you into a shopping list where it has popped all those ingredients that you need for those recipes in that um, dish. Now you can see here, it gives you the option to swap things. So if there's something there that you go, I oh, particular like that brand, you can press, press the swap button and then go and choose the one that you would prefer. And then choose the one that you prefer, select that and it'll swap it out for you. And then you've got your Woolworths card here, all ready to go. How cool is that? I think that's the best. It's, it's you know, the Thermomix itself, it's such an amazing machine. The cookie dough is absolutely the icing on the cake. It's just, um, it's so streamlined. I know. And look, we say, you know, with the Thermomix, you can cook manually as well. And, you know, sometimes I do. But honestly, when you're looking for inspiration and ease or you want someone else, you know, it takes the pressure off. There's often one person in the house who does all the cooking and it takes the pressure off that one person because I can say to my kids, right, this is what we're having and it's on the machine just follow the bouncing ball which is great now i don't know if any of you heard that but i wish you could smell it and seriously if it wasn't hot i seriously think i would just drink, drink it straight from the jug but just to show you the texture I'm just and this just to show you you know we talk about the different functions that looks amazing but the, the consistency, I've got more than that's going to fill that bowl, so let's not do anything too silly. Um, but it's just, it smells incredible and I can't wait to taste it, but I am going to let it cool down a tiny bit first. Um, and have your kebs come out of the oven, Mandy? Yes, yeah, I thought I'd show you one of those. I'm going to cut right, it well, open. I'll it to you and then I'll go and grab um, my, um, I was going to say lasagna then, my tuna mornay. Oh, look at that. So I've just got one here. I've got to just cut it open. We'll have a little look inside. So there it is. 
a um, little bit of butter and garlic in there. And it smells amazing. Um, I might have a little taste. Mm. It's really good. Really good. And I reckon, excuse me, talking my mouth for, that you could make those and you could put them in a lunchbox. Um, they well, are like really delicious. The thing about that too, it, you know, that's, you can make your own homemade chicken nuggets. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And I really like it with them I mean, with the with the nuts, with the almonds in the in that coating. And there's a little bit of that through the mixture as well. It's um they're really good. So I would definitely recommend those. Let's have a look at yours, Michelle. Hang on. Oh, hang on. Let me let me salt light. Oh, there you go. oh my god, it smells amazing. I I I've got munching it. in the background. I, ta I tasted the mm. mixture before um, and having that heaped tablespoon, let's be honest, it was probably two tablespoons, I'm very heavy-handed, um, of in the mixture was the perfect amount of good flavour. So I think my family are going to be very happy with it. I'm just going to shut that on the door, um, turn it off. Um, I think they're going to be very happy with the uh, tuna mornay tomorrow night and I think they're going to be pretty happy with a bit of... Um, butterscotch custard tonight but in you know we do like a live taste test and so now that that's potentially cooled down a little bit oh my god that's amazing <laughs> dangerous it's so good <laughs> oh i'm not telling them <laughs> it's so good go and hide it somewhere quickly uh, yeah i will hide it in my tummy <laughs> Anyway, um, I hope you've enjoyed tonight, everybody, because now I'm just going to, I need to go because I have a very big bowl of carbs to eat. <laughs> you got to eat. <laughs> and I want you to, you know, tomorrow night, I heard a friend say this once and I love it. I say it all the time now. But tomorrow night I'll be going, Friday night Michelle is very grateful to Thursday night Michelle who already <laughs> made dinner. So, um, so think about that when you're doing these things because that was super easy. So, you know, when you, on the nights you are cooking, there's no reason you can't get two meals on the go. That's something that was really quick to get in the oven. So you can go, right, I'm going to get that in the oven for tomorrow night and then cook tonight's dinner now or vice versa. So thank you so much for joining us tonight. We really enjoyed doing these cooking classes with you guys and thanks for the questions and I hope you enjoyed the recipes. Um, I will do a little recap email and put my extra tips on that because I think if you follow the recipe the way it is on Cookie Do, it's a bit bland. With a few little enhancements, it's amazing. So um, thank you so much. As I said, if you do want to have a demo, please reach out to your consultant. We would love to do that for you. If you are looking to invest in a Thermomix tonight, please reach out to the consultant who invited you along and he or she will send you their buy button link so you can get a Thermomix on your bench quickly and start saving money and cooking amazing meals and getting a bit retro in your kitchen too. Thank you, Mandy. <laughs> I love working with you and cooking with you always. Likewise. It's always fun. And that, thanks nice. to everyone for coming along. Yeah, thanks, everyone. Good night. We'll see you again soon. See ya. Bye.